Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Today's session will feature a presentation from Dean. He is a senior IT recruiter and job search coach specializing in the recruitment of IT professionals and organizations ranging from startups to large size multinational corporations seeking IT talent across the greater Toronto area. He has recruited on a variety of roles within IT, both technical and non-technical. Dean is a very active content creator on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and has his own podcast in order to help job seekers in their quest for employment and has built a following of 27,000 plus on LinkedIn alone. Good luck, Dean, on your presentation, okay? Thanks so much, Sandra. Thanks. And uh, thanks for the introduction. All right, sounds good. Looks like I'm good to go. So uh, welcome to all of you folks tuning in. So what I'm going to be is uh, I've been hearing a lot of buzz about it and an impending uh, resignation boom. So I wanted to speak a bit about that and, and talk a bit about how, how you as job seekers can take advantage of that. So let me just pull up my presentation here and uh, we'll get right to it. Just, just give me a couple of seconds, folks. And I believe you should be able to see it. If someone can actually confirm in the comments, that would be perfect. I actually can't see the comments at the same time, but if, maybe if someone can let me know in the comments that, uh, yeah, it looks like it is showing. All right, perfect. So let me just run the presentation. All right, so taking taking advantage of the resignation boon. So again, um, my name is Dean Kulawira. I'm a senior IT recruiter and founder of DK Global Talent. Uh, now, what I'm going to be covering in today's agenda is what is, first of all, the post-pandemic resignation boom. Um, we're also going to be covering some ideas on how you can take advantage of it. I'll be sharing a sample message you can use in your networking. And uh, finally, I'll close it off with a Q&A. So uh, while I'm running the presentation, by the way, folks, I, I don't really see the comments. So uh, I'm not ignoring your comments. If you have any questions while I'm going through the presentation, definitely feel free to put it in the comments. Uh, I will take a look at that right after I complete my presentation and uh, and, and all of that good stuff. All right. Uh, just a quick bit about myself. Uh, I have about eight plus years of experience history as a recruiter specializing. In, I recruited for a variety of different organizational sizes, as uh, Sandra mentioned in her in her uh, introduction of myself. Uh, I recruited in uh, startups to large size multinational corporations. A variety of different sectors, tech, retail, e-commerce, government, uh, banking, finance, insurance, dealt uh, with the various levels of uh, stakeholders as well at these organizations, uh, from HR personnel to C-level executives and business owners. Uh, one of the most well-known tech recruiters and job search coaches in Toronto, I, I sh post regular job search content. I'll share my links uh, right at the end of the presentation and make sure you follow me if you don't already. I promise you'll get a lot of uh, great uh, tips and advice so from following me on LinkedIn especially. And I've also been a panelist, guest, and, and or keynote speaker. It's definitely yeah, I presented at uh, various torontojobs.ca uh, uh, events as well. So always, always love uh, returning and, and uh, presenting uh, various topics uh, at these events. So what is the post-pandemic resignation boom? Now, when I first heard about this, I was, I was kind of confused because I was like, okay, what, is, what exactly is causing this? And what exactly is a post-pandemic resignation boom? I was wondering, is it like some kind of a marketing thing? Is someone trying to sell something? Right. But as I did some more research, I actually saw that it is very much something that is currently occurring and, and will be occurring over the next couple of months. And the second thing I started thinking about is, well, how can jobs, job seekers and how can job seekers really take advantage of this, uh, you know, quote unquote, post pandemic resignation? From, from an article I read on Global News uh, written by Anne Gaviola. So what she mentioned in the article, and this is pretty much the, the key part of that article, is she mentions labor market experts warn of a looming resignation boom because employees in Canada and the U.S. who have been contemplating, contemplating an exit have largely held off. But as workplaces shift and there's a better sense of what the next phase of work looks like, that pent-up attrition is set to begin and build. This just real quick, folks, right, in terms of so we can understand what exactly is happening here. And this is how, how I kind of gave my understanding of this situation. And it's simply that, you know, when the pandemic hit, obviously so many people were, were affected negatively and people were laid off and, and, and you know, maybe many people were, were affected in that respect. But also what was happening on the flip side is many people who, who, uh, who were employed and, and were not laid off their current jobs or, or their jobs at that time. 
uh, because they didn't want to take the risk, especially given the, the uncertainty in the marketplace. They didn't want to take the risk of, of, of uh, switching over there to a new job or, or making that move in their career that they were wanting to uh, make a move on. So they, they held on to jobs that they might not necessarily have, have wanted to stay in. Uh, and they held off on any of their plans in, in moving on to and in considering other career opportunities. And the other thing is also what happened is um, not all of them ended up in jobs that they, they, they felt like were ideal for their careers and it ended up taking, so many people were ended up taking uh, jobs and, and, and roles and positions that maybe not have been ideal, but they, they had to take on in order to put, put, put a roof over their heads, all that stuff to, to manage their expenses and all that good stuff. So what's basically the, the whole reason for this pen, post pandemic resignation boom is now that as the market up, things are kind of returning to normal. I wouldn't say obviously, but as we approach that that uh, you know that place where things are starting to get get back to normal, things are opening up. Uh, you know, businesses it's kind of business as usual, and, and you know, companies and organizations have adapted. The vaccinations are rolling out. Cities are opening up again. All these people who who you know who would have maybe maybe and taken up new opportunities during the pandemic. Are now suddenly in a position where they're like, okay, you know, things look like they're, they're it looks like things are going well right now. It's probably not as much of a risk for me to make a switch right now. So you got a whole bunch of people in that situation, right? And and, and that's what well, that's that's this whole whole thing about the the post pandemic resignation boom that 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 uh, you know people are talking about right now. Now, how can you take advantage of this as a potential job seeker, right? That that's the whole whole point of this. If you're tuning in, you you you're, you you. You know, maybe you're someone that is looking to make that switch, or maybe you're in the situation uh, that I just described for people that are looking to make a switch right now. Now, how can you take advantage of it? Well, definitely now is the time for networking. You got to make sure that that you're making the use of networking right now because th these these uh, potential openings at companies, I mean, these are not not things that are going to be immediately advertised. Like employers are not going to be able to predict exactly who in their organization, in most cases, uh, who in their organization will be resigning and ex uh, et cetera, and all that stuff. So one of the best ways for you to get this intel is through networking, right? Networking and making direct contact. Uh, in my opinion, it's with three categories of, of, of people in your professional networking. It's a great conversation. This whole presentation. You some conversations uh, with, with a couple of categories of individuals out there, right? So you want to make sure you're reaching out to recruit. This is definitely, uh, you know, being a recruiter myself, this many recruiters out there, especially if you're connecting with staffing agency recruiters, not just staffing agency, but also corporate recruiters as well. It's a great conversation starting right now. What are, what are you folks doing in preparation for this impending resignation boom? It might be a great, great way for you to reach out and connect with new recruiters uh, that you want to add to your network, especially if you're networking on LinkedIn. Because again, this is this is very much a real concern for recruiters, especially if it's staffing agency and you know and their clients are depending on them to find talent that are going to stick around. If, and you know if it's if it's a contractor, all that stuff. These are things that that um, you know most people in the staffing industry are going to be thinking about right now, uh, right? So so you definitely want to make sure you're networking with, reconnecting with the recruiters in your network, and also connecting with new recruiters that you can uh, again have this conversation with. Uh, definitely hiring managers. So look, if you're connected with any hiring managers in your network or, or uh, you're looking to connect with new people in your network, you definitely want to be targeting hiring managers. Again, great conversational starter, great, great talk. They're going to be concerned about this as well. Right. And um, <clears throat> again, there's no set date where everyone's going to be <laughs> suddenly resigning. This is already, this has all been happening and this, this will continue. Months, right? So uh, it's a great time to, for you to be networking with, reconnecting with your with uh, hiring managers you might you might be connected with, making connections with new hiring managers. So don't don't discount your uh, peers as well, right? People position as you, maybe people, people who are working in, in the positions you want to get into. Uh, it's a great time to reconnect with your peers because you might have access. They might. Given the close, you know, depending on the closeness of your relationship with your peers, they might even give you a heads up and let you know, hey, look, I'm I'm planning on resigning. You know, short of them ha working for for an employer they absolutely hate, uh, most people would be more than happy to give a referral or recommendation to their employer when they do resign. So it might be a great opportunity for you folks out there. You know, if you really think ahead, 
uh, reconnect with your peers, people, again, in the same industry as you, your friends, your former colleagues uh, who might be thinking about um, resigning and le leaving the current company they're at, but uh, who might be more than happy to provide you as a recommendation to their, uh, their current organization or to their current managers. Now, in your networking, I did want to share with you a sample message you can send out on LinkedIn, or if you're sending an email, uh, heads up, um, I will be sharing this, uh, this sample message newsletter. I will share the link uh, later on in the presentation. I will share this link. So you, uh, uh in my, uh, newsletter, probably, probably early next week, able to get a hold of this right now, but here, here's a sample message you can potentially send to a recruiter. You're trying to connect with by using this resignation boom that, that, that is uh, currently ongoing. So a message might be, hi, Dean, I hope you're doing well and keeping well. I've been here about an impending resignation boom and thought this would be a great time to connect with you as markets start to open up expectation I mean employees who held on to their jobs during the pandemic may be leaving in large numbers I know that delivering high quality quick replacements to your clients is probably something of great importance to you I wanted the opportunity to be considered as a viable candidate for your clients so you're ready for that and can consider me as an option my expertise is in XYZ and I've attached my resume when would you be available this week for a brief phone call or Zoom to show you how I can be of someone of value to your clients faster than your name? So that's a sample message that, that can that you can start sending out to recruiters right away uh, to generate that conversation, right? Because like I said, st the staffing industry, this is definitely something that the staffing industry would be concerned about because they want to make sure they're delivering. And again, uh, if you want that sample message, I'm going to share my, uh, my, uh, the link to my newsletter shortly. So you can, uh, sign up. I'll be, I'll be sending out that template for my newsletter, uh, subscribers next week. So feel free to, uh, 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 sign up for that. So how I can help as I wrap up this presentation is. I professional integrated product area. Definitely get in touch. Again, I do recruit for IT. So, uh, definitely want to get in touch with you and connect with you and uh, get to know about you and, and see if there's any way I can assist you in, in the, the near or in, the, in at some point in the future. Uh, you can follow me on social media content. I, I post job search content very, very frequently. If you want all my social media links, they're on my website, dkglobaltalent.com forward slash connect. Um, I also do a weekly job search live stream every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Eastern time zone on YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. So make sure you uh, follow me on there. On any of those platforms, I do a weekly show again at 11 a.m. Eastern time zone. So respond to any questions people have uh, in the comments about anything job search related to you. So you're more, more, more than welcome to uh, to join the, uh, my. Uh, I also have a free job search strategies new. Sending that I will be sending it out to my subscribers list uh, early next week, and you can you can sign up for that at dkglobaltalent.com forward slash newsletter. And uh, finally, if you're applying for jobs online, but not getting responses from hiring teams, is that, if that's a major challenge you're currently facing, I uh, definitely want to invite you to sign up for my free masterclass to learn about why that's happening and what you can do about it. And you can check that out at dkglobaltalent.com forward slash masterclass. And that's it for me, folks. So thank you. Appreciate that. I will now head into the comments. But again, if you want to connect with me on social media, all my links are at dkglobaltalent.com forward slash connect. All right. So let me just quickly go back to the comments and see if we have any questions. Um, and uh, I'll take it from there, I guess. Uh, so, okay. So Will Kornhauser says, what's the approach to this analysis? Uh, so I'm not sure what exactly you're asking. If you can clarify your question there, what is the approach to this analysis? Uh, well, what I did share, make use of who's going to be resigning, which, which individuals specifically and from which companies, like that's not something that's going to be publicly available. And most companies will not be able to really predict um, who's going to be resigning, right? So this is why you want to make use of, of networking, Will. Uh, so again, like I said, you want to be connecting with recruiters, right? You want to be, uh, you know, kind of, kind of as a preemptive kind of a, a move there. You want to be connecting with recruiters. You want to be uh, having this conversation about uh, and positioning yourself as someone that they can potentially use to replace these people that might might be leaving their 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 clients, right? And not just staffing agency recruiters, but corporate recruiters as well. Uh, next thing, you want to be networking well, with, definitely with hiring managers, right? 
because again, they're probably experiencing this right now where people are putting in their resignations or they're going to definitely be, be experiencing this over the next couple of months as, as it, again, as things start to open up. So, so folks, look, networking is probably really, really key in order for you to, to take advantage of this, uh, this, this resignation boom that's currently of course your peers right well so better, great time for you to reconnect with your peers uh, depending again depending on the closeness of the relationship you know they might be asking you they, they might or might not let you know that they're resigning but if they if they are that is you know some key information there and that's where you can really connect with them about seeing if they can refer you or recommend you when they do put in their resignation as, as a potential replacement to their current uh, uh, company unless it's a company they hate in that case they would not want you working there either right but uh, yeah, that that would be, that would probably be the best approach. Well, given that this is not something that's going to be, uh, you know, public put out there. I mean, people are not going to announce, hey, uh, hey, everyone, I'm going to be resigning soon. I'm looking for new opportunities. No, it's not going to happen like that, right? So networking is, I would say, the best approach in order for you to uncover, um, you know, these opportunities and and taking advantage of it. So hope that answers your question. Well, great question. Uh, so Talha Khan says, any advice on how to make a great, greater impact with, with the recruiting hiring manager on the first screening call or informational interview? Yeah. Two pieces of advice there, Talha. First, first piece of advice is you want to understand the, the hiring motivation as soon as possible. Why are they looking to hire? Uh, is it to solve a set of problems, pain points? Uh, is it in regards to some project they were going on? Is it because of a resignation, right? The, the, that someone was was working on a very, very important key project. Suddenly they resigned and now they really need someone to replace them. Uh, you got to understand the motivation. And secondly, you want to you wanna highlight the most relevant aspects of yourself and your background that you bring to the table because that's what's really going to capture the attention of the hiring team, right? So, so I, you know, there's so many aspects to, to, to being successful in, in the, uh, the first screening call or the informational interview. But uh, those two things, I think, are really key that, that a lot of people actually kind of kind of uh, miss out on uh, because the, the hiring team, the, the recruiter, they, they don't want to hear about everything, but they do want to hear about the most relevant stuff. Right. It really comes down to relevance, folks. The interview is about the intersection between what you bring to the table and what the organization is looking for in an ideal candidate and, and whatever problems, pain points, challenges they're experiencing that are really motiv motivating them to want to make that hire. Right. So hope that helps. Salah. Great question there. Okay, so we got Ayaz. Uh, Ayaz Mahmood says, what is your opinion about LinkedIn IT job postings? Because I never got, even after applying within the, my advice is, look, you, use multiple channels. Do not depend on any one channel. For COVID-19, I'm free to Google this, by the way, right? But, but the average number of posts, job posting roughly 150 applications so basically for every posting put out there's on average there's 250 applicants applying for the role now what the numbers are currently doing during covid and, and after as we come out of covid 19 as well i'm not sure i haven't really found any any reliable data on that but uh what that tells you is there's just so many different people competing for the same role right so um the chances of you getting found and then uh you know you actually getting a phone call like you don't, you do not want to depend on those numbers, right? If you're one in two fifty on average, so what you, what I want you thinking about, Ayaz, is what can you do beyond simply applying and, and waiting for a response? Um, I don't want you or anyone, anyone else out there. Like none of you folks should be taking a, a passive approach. You need to be, you need to be thinking about how, how can I proactively get myself in front of the hiring managers, in front of recruiters? Uh, I'm not saying don't apply. I'm saying definitely keep applying. But what else can you do? So definitely, you definitely want to make use of direct messaging. You want to make use of networking. You want to make use of actually attending events just like these where visibility and, and be known and connect with potential hiring managers, recruiters, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, what else can you do is, um, you know, join uh, or also attend uh, in, um, industry related events, right? Uh, events related to your field, your industry, whatever it is. So look, the point here is you got to look at what you can do beyond simply hitting apply, right? You got, you got to use multiple channels and multiple means. Uh, you don't want to simply hit submit and, and then depend on or, or wait on that response, right? So hope that helps, Ayaz, and, and uh, all the best in your job search. Uh, any other questions? Uh, Ayaz says, thanks, Dean. Hey, no worries, Ayaz. Hope that helps and, uh, you know, all the best. 
Uh, I'm not sure if there's any other questions. I don't see any other questions. Uh, let me know if you have any other questions, folks. Feel free to put it in the comments. And if not, I guess we're we'll wrapping this up. I see Sandra coming back. Um, the only thing I was just going to add is, um, are you able to maybe put um, your LinkedIn information or an email that people can contact you just directly in the chat? Um, and that way they can uh, jot it down. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah sure. And we do yeah, have one more question just, after uh, you're done. Okay, great. All right. Uh, yeah, I shared my LinkedIn in the comments. Uh, let me see yeah. here. So we got Mark. So. Mark says, from your experience, what are the biggest pain points from organizing? And Mark says, certain skill sets missing. Yeah, so Mark, that's a great question, actually. So the, the biggest pain points from organizations, I mean, it depends on the project, right? It depends on the project, depends on the position, depends on the role. So I can't say it's just one thing, Mark. Uh, but what I would advise you to do, Mark, is when you are in conversation with, with hiring managers and recruiters, uh, you want to ask them questions that will allow you to further uncover what those pain points, what those challenges are, right? And one of the best ways to do that is simply ask, uh, and this is one great question all of you should be asking any recruiter or any hiring manager on the first in initial pre-screen is, hey, what caught your attention about my resume? What caught your attention about my application, right? And when they and, and when you ask this question, when whatever they tell you is going to give you a clue as to what what the what the potential challenges and pain points might be because they wouldn't be the, the reason that certain things caught caught their attention on your resume or your application is because those certain things that caught their attention is going to help them at their organization with whatever pain points and challenges they're experiencing so my advice mark like there's no one one like challenge or pain point that every organization is facing like it, it, every organization organization has a has a unique situation uh unique projects going on I mean, obviously the projects are similar from organization to organization, but what I'm saying is the motivation might be different. And, and the best way for you to figure that out is to simply ask great questions, right? Ask questions that allow you to get an idea of what those potential challenges are. And, and remember the pre-screen, the interview, it's not just, I mean, don't think of it just as an, as, a, as an interview or a pre-screen. It's a conversation, folks, right? It's a conversation. It's a two-way conversation. And part of your job is to not just, you know, go for the hard sell and just, you know, yeah, I'm the best and I'm the greatest but also for you to figure out uh, what problems, what challenges these people are uh, experiencing that, that will allow you to help them out, right? So hope that helps, Mark. Uh, we got uh, Rupinder says, what recommendations do you have for me regarding job search strategy and software development? Well, I kind of already covered that Rupinder when Ayaz asked me that question. So uh, pretty much the same advice, right? You wanna use multiple channels, multiple means to get yourself in front of the right people. Uh, Mark says, I'm seeing large movement to cloud technologies. I was wondering if you were seeing a lot of it. This is really where my question was. Okay, okay, okay. I, I, I understood, Mark. Yeah, I mean, definitely cloud, um, you know, cloud project. Cloud is definitely a hot area. Um, anything to do with uh, cybersecurity, digital transformation projects, virtualization. Like, these are all areas that, uh, again, when the, uh, you know, as the pandemic is going, like, you, you you can see where organizations are shifting because because you know obviously, clearly businesses organizations are shifting to solve problems being experienced um, you know during the midst of for example the pandemic right definitely cloud was cloud was is such a hot area because so many businesses had to end up you know so many businesses that were not prepared for the whole hundred percent remote work um, environment and stuff like that moving to the cloud and stuff like that so yeah absolutely cloud is cloud technology is definitely hot a cloud it's definitely hot area. Um, you know, in general. So Sandra says, uh, thank you, Dean, for your presentation. It was very insightful. Thank you for everyone who joined us. If you have any questions, feel free to write. panel starting at 3.30. Yeah, so I guess that's a wrap, folks. So, uh, hey, I hope you found the session helpful. And um, uh, look, bottom line, folks, make use of networking. Take advantage of the resignation boom that is uh, currently ongoing and will continue to happen. And uh, use it to your advantage in your job search, right? So uh, if there's no other questions. I'm going to end the session right now. So thanks, everyone, for tuning in. And all the best in your job search, right? Have a wonderful uh, day, everyone.